Home improvements are a joy everybody likes. Being a full piece of furniture or just a simple solution fixing a problem. I want to tackle two storage improvements for my apartment and equip these projects with nice joinery showcasing a new pantry router. I got this and the older model sponsored. And since I only need one of them for my projects, I will give this one away for free. So later in the video, I'll tell you more about that giveaway together with a pretty exciting announcement. But first, let me show you the assembly of the new machine. The machine kit came in two boxes. Oh wow, look at that. Cardboard. Variable space dovetail templates. Oh, we'll use them and the box tray templates as well. Yeah, please, less talking, more making. The first box contains most of the assemblies, the other, the small parts and the valuable stuff. Haha, <laughs> assembly instructions. Nice joke. Okay, maybe I'll need the instructions. But in all seriousness, the assembly is easy. Basically, bolting this to that, push a part in place here, align one part with another there, and shortly after, the build is complete. Then taking care of accessories and a crap load of joinery templates. Now this was a fun assembly and everything on this machine screams quality. It's really nice. Building it was so easy, it's almost boring. And with these instructions, with colored pictures and everything explained, you really have to try screwing something up. Nothing compared to the older model where you had to basically bolt all the frames together yourself and align everything to each other. That was quite time consuming and more difficult to get right. All nice and well, but what is this machine good for? With this machine, you can precisely cut a big variety of wood joints with a router and a template. The shape of the template gets copied through the router onto a workpiece, for example, a mortise and tenon joint. First, cutting the mortise with the inner template section. Then switching to the outer template section for the tenon. Now the tenon is still too big and doesn't fit. This can be adjusted by changing the position of the follow bearing on the tapered template. By moving it forward, you trace a smaller circumference and cut a tenon smaller accordingly. After a couple adjustments, the fit is absolutely perfect. Yeah, the setup is simple and quick and with this joint now set up, you can put in piece after piece and cut multiple of these joints in minutes. And this is just the bare minimum this machine can do. Later I will show you some more advanced joinery, but for now let's do something actually useful with it. When moving into my apartment and buying furniture, I accidentally bought these baskets here with slides in the wrong size. But instead of returning them, I can put them to good use in a tiny storage room with disaster inside. And get it organized with a dresser shelf type thing. I use construction lumber for the whole frame. Shit. It's already planed, chamfered and has easily removable labels attached. With my detailed cut list, I first break everything down roughly and then cut it to length. Now the first joinery are some mortise and tenon joints. I mark all mortise locations on the pieces and align the first one with a center mark on the panther router table. To make the mortise centered in the piece, I put an offcut between a stop and a template holder. Then touching the piece with the bit, set the cutting depth and off we go. Cutting one mortise after the other. And five minutes later, it's all done. Then moving the follower to the outside for the tenons. Here I utilize the centering fence that has a full and a half scale. Aligning the half scale with the table center then centers the workpiece. Pretty cool. The flip stop makes sure all pieces have the same overhang. Then I again set the depth of cut and go. This is a real time shot of the whole tenon cut. Literally 15 minutes of cutting and 8 perfectly fitting joints. For this piece on the bottom, I'll make a bridle joint. 
I can use a long template from another set or just a longer mortise and tenon template. Here I set the cutting depth to the material width, everything else stays the same. And no surprise, this joint fits as well. Easy to assemble, but enough friction to hold it up. Next are the parts that space the sides apart. It'll be some more mortise and tenon joints, but this time with a bigger bit and the first template again. Without any other changes, I can already start cutting. And here's another detail of the templates. You can position the follower at different depths, which makes the mortise slightly longer than it needs to. This creates a gap, which is often useful for assembly and gluing. With the bigger bit, I also need to switch to a bigger follower for cutting the tenons. And now I also installed the brush, which greatly improves the dust collection. No more mess. Now that everything is cut into the sides, I can glue stuff together, starting with the bridle joint. Some glue, checking for square, and clamp it. The mortise and tenon joints don't even need clamping, and I found a straw is a perfect glue spreading tool here. Once dry, I could mark, drill, and install all slides. Now the connecting rails. I won't glue these tenons, but use screws and washers. This makes it disassemblable and easy to transport. With the precise mortise and tenons and screws, this holds together securely already, but I would like to give this frame even more stability by adding one diagonal bracing and I'll glue this in place with again mortise and tenon joints. I made the mortises extra long, which makes sense in a second. For the diagonal tenons, I set up a fence at 45 degrees and then slid the template over until the bit center met the corner of my piece. Then cutting as usual. Doing it like that now allows me to glue the piece in while everything else is still assembled and aligned. Pretty cool. It's quite amazing to see how much rigidity this adds to the frame. And now it's done. At last, I chamfered all sharp edges and then brought it into the tiny room. There, I secured it to the wall and then loaded it up with stuff. Much better. I can now reach anything inside the baskets without crawling into the space. Still, having to bend down every time might not be for everyone, but I'm still young and don't mind doing that. Okay, the next project is for the kitchen right here. When moving into the apartment, this was just a closet without shelves or anything inside. Pretty useless. Now from a different kitchen that would have been thrown away, I could save this apothecary cabinet mechanism. Now this mechanism was built for a taller and narrower cabinet. And as you can see, I shortened it to make it fit this one. But now with these metal baskets, there's quite a bit of wasted space left and right. So the project is quite straightforward, just make wider boxes that still fit the metal frame and the hooks it has. And that turned out to be quite a challenge. For mounting, you need to go in diagonally, then tilt, move forward and down. I was literally standing there for a half an hour studying the required movements and designing a wooden box around these movements in my mind. Eventually, I came up with this design. Let's just build it and see if it works. I can use up leftover pieces from old projects as material. I only need 10 thick and 10 thin boards. I bring everything to rough width, then joint a face and one edge, and then resew it to rough thickness. Unfortunately, there's a worm inside the thin boards, which instantly turned this into firewood, and I had to cut up another board. Oh well. But then I planed everything to final thickness, cut the boards to width, and then to length. All done with some test pieces for the joinery, which will be dovetails. For that, the Pantorota comes with a dovetail bit and matching dovetail templates that can be arranged with different spacings. First, I set a marking gauge to the thin board's thickness and scribe a line to a test piece. Clamped on the table, I can then use that to set the depth of cut and lock both stops to keep the router in place. With the follower bearing in the middle of the templates, I start by cutting the tails. 
Nothing to adjust here, so I cut all the tails now. Next, with a straight bit installed again, I set the marking gauge to the thick boards, scribe it to another test piece, and again set the depth of cut. With a pencil, I transfer the location for the pins to roughly see where I need to cut. The follower bearing now follows the dovetail shape to cut the pins. At first the pins are, as intended, too big. And to adjust that I can now lower the template holder and cut again. I did a few fine adjustments until this is just awesome. The setup is done and I can go through all parts in about 20 minutes. For one box I also tried box joints, which essentially works the same as the dovetails, but simpler and using the same bit for everything. Test fitting a box seems promising so far, but assembly comes later. Now all pieces get a groove for the bottom panel, all the way through on the thin boards and stop grooves on the thick ones. Assembled again, I can take the real panel dimensions for the bottom, then I pre-sanded some plywood for that and cut them accordingly. The next step I shouldn't screw up, cutting half of the pieces in half. Some identification labeling should be helpful later. Next, with the fence close to the blade, I cut a groove in one end. You will see the purpose in the end. Then I mark the hole locations before making the cutout with two cuts. At the marks I drill a hole, glue in a dowel and flush trim it afterwards. The purpose is to have cross grain for the threads of the eye hooks to bite into. Considering the rest is hardwood this may is unnecessary, but it seemed the right thing to do. Finally, before gluing, I wanted to have the sides somewhat see-through to easily identify what's inside the boxes. The fastest way for me was to cut a series of slots with the CNC router and round them over afterwards. And I'm pretty happy with the result. Then I spread glue on all joint surfaces, pushed, clamped or hammered the pieces together, checked for square and adjusted if necessary and removed the glue squeeze out. With the glue dry, I then installed the eye hooks by hand. Well, I held the drill with my hand. Next, the bottoms get two centered cutouts. They are important for installing the finished boxes. One smaller, one bigger. I spread glue in the grooves of both box halves, put the bottom panel in and added a shit ton of clamps. So far, so good. Let's see if it fits. So to install it, I put it in diagonally over the hook I wanted to end up, then back into the big cutout, tilt up the front and slide it forward, and then lower it down until the hooks engage. All right, it fits as intended, pretty cool. However, the first box I tried off camera didn't fit right away. I wanted to reproduce that failure and show you the fix. However, all the other four boxes fit the first try. I'm not complaining, just wanted to point out that not everything you see in a video works out perfectly on the first try. Back in the workshop I do the finishing touches, rounding over all edges, sanding and applying a finish. With all the cutouts only spraying seems feasible. The first time I'm trying a spray gun and it worked fantastically. I used a solvent based lacquer with about 20% lacquer thinner. And also quite convenient to have a built-in hanger. I let the lacquer fully cure for two weeks and then filled the whole cabinet up with stuff. Wow, the amount of stuff that fits in here is incredible. And of course the key feature is you have easy access to everything from both sides. One problem you might not expect is the weight starts bending the cabinet bottom, so it needs some more support in the center. Now I know getting your hands on one of these isn't the easiest or cheapest, but if you ever have the chance to, I'm pretty sure you won't regret it. Okay, announcement and giveaway. If you ever wanted to meet and talk to me in person, you will have the chance on July 15th and 16th in San Francisco at Open Source. 
75 of the best science and engineering YouTubers, and for some reason, me as well, will host an incredible event for you. There will be interactive exhibits, most creators will bring some of their projects, and you can show off your own projects there as well. There's a giant space for that. I will bring this Panther router with me, and someone will take it home. Tickets for the event are available for everyone at opensource.life, and I would say, see you in San Francisco.